know this side there must be some restaurant. We bought. For clarity, the particulars of offense on the indictment is that Nandu to Agnes between the months of June and July 2022 at the office of the Prime Minister's stores in Namanve and in Kola Cell, Buruani Parish, Mukono Municipality, in Mukono District, dealt with government property to wit 2,000 pre-painted iron sheets of Gorge 28 marked office of the Prime Minister by receiving and holding the said iron sheets, which he had reason to believe were acquired as a result of loss of public property, <coughs> an offence under Section 10.1 of the Anti-Corruption Act 2009 as amended. So which is section this one of Section 10. The, the offense of loss of public property, an offense under Section 10.1 of the Anti-Corruption Act, 2009. That a penal legislation must be precise. This, my Lord, was the principle in the case of Charles Onyango Bo and Andrew Mujuni Mwenda Constitutional Appeal Number Two of Two Thousand Two Supreme Court Number Two of Two Thousand Two Supreme Court Judgment of Justice Mulenga. My Lord, at page three, at the bottom, His Lordship stated that the substance of ground three is criticism of the construction of section 50. And then it's page three at the bottom. The gist of the criticism is that the section is too imprecise for a penal legislation. I must say that much of the criticism is quite valid. Precision and clarity in the definition of a criminal offense is essential if a person accused of the offense is to have a fair trial. Appeal number one of 1998. My Lord, it is our submission that this offense of created by Section 21A, 1 and 2, dealing with the suspect property, is imprecise. And as such, it lacks clarity. And a person, like the accused, charged with this kind of offense, is not guaranteed a fair trial, my lord. <coughs> my lord, this is a new section which has not been litigated upon. At least I've tried to find out authorities on the ingredients of this section. I've failed. This section is broad. So as a result, we decided, my lord, to test this section 
not even testing, we believe this section is unconstitutional. Because if you want to understand, if you want to understand one of the leads to what this section was meant to do, my lords, we believe we need to look at the long title of the amendment, of the act. So far, nobody has been convicted of an offense. Yes, my lord? So you said that you have decided therefore. You will have decided to broad and vague nature of section 21A, 1 and 2 of the Anti-Corruption Amendment Act of 2015. Following the proceedings before you where the accused took plea on the indictment, we believe that questions for constitutional interpretation have arisen. Because we submit vehemently that this section is broad, vague, imprecise, and cannot fit into the fair trial guarantee and also the principle of legality as enshrined or enacted in Article 28, 1 and 12 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. Article 137 5 and 6 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda which stipulates that where any question as to interpretation of this constitution arises in any proceedings in a court of law other than a field court martial, the court A may, if it is of the opinion that the question involves a substantial question of law, and B, shall, if any party to the proceedings request it to do so, refer the question to the Constitutional Court for decision in accordance with the clause one of this article, say one A, one and two of the of the Anti-Corruption Act of 2015 contravenes Articles 28, 1, and 12 is vested in the Constitutional Article 28, 1, and 12 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda 1995 as amended. That jurisdiction is vested in the Constitutional Court under Article 137. And if the question arises, my Lord, from proceedings like the instant one, and then upon a court's own opinion or upon a request from a party to the proceeding, the question shall be referred to the Constitutional Court for a decision. We framed a question whether Section 21A, 1 and 2 of the Anti-Corruption Act of 2009 as amended by Act 12 
of 2015, under which the accused has been charged with, is inconsistent with <coughs> or in contravention of Article 2081 and 12 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. The question, my Lord, is whether Section 21A1 and 2 of the Anti-Corruption Act, number the Act of 2009, as amended by Act 12 of 2015, under which the accused has been charged with, in, is inconsistent with or in contravention of Article 28.1 and 12 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda 1995 as amended. My Lord, in the circumstances, we apply to you, to this honorable court, to refer this question to the constitutional court for its decision in accordance with the clause one of Article 137. And Uganda constitutional petition number 28 of 10 in brackets reference my lord their lordships gave guidance in this case in which the, their lordships held that the question which is referred must arise out of the proceedings on disclose the materials which are not yet exhibited. And it's for that reason that court faulted the trial magistrate for having made a constitutional reference. The question arises from the proceedings. And also there's guidance in the case of versus EC and the others which is a constitutional petition reference number 8 of 2016, in which also court defined the ambit of how a reference or the qualification for questions for determination by stating that it is unfair unconstitutional for a person to go through a trial when the provisions of the law under which that person has been charged are vague, ambiguous, broad, and imprecise. So in the circumstances, we pray that you refer this matter, this question, to the Constitutional Court. My Lord, yes, we have also filed a petition, but it, the questions in the petition are broad. We filed a petition in the Constitutional Court. The questions are brought. Yeah, it canvasses the issue and also other issues. Yes, because for this one, my Lord, before you, the question must ar arise out of the proceedings. <coughs> in the Constitutional Court, yes. And that petition you have filed in the Constitutional Court canvasses the question you see, no, my lord. Yes. 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 
Yes, my Lord, I'll address you on that. My Lord, first of all, so there's precedent to, my Lord, what we have done. In the circumstances, my Lord, we submit that we are not wasting court's time or doing double work. But we pray, my Lord, that the proceedings, these proceedings be stayed. And we pray that you refer. We pray that these proceedings before you be stayed. And you refer this matter to the Constitutional Court. My Lord, the good news is that the Constitutional Court or the Court of Appeal as it is now is fully constituted, unlike those days when we used to struggle when it had no judges. And we shall, if you please uh, send the reference, we shall endeavor to ensure that this matter is swiftly handled. went at length talk about the long title of the Anti-Corruption Amendment Act of 2015. We, in reply, invite courts to also look at the long title of the Anti-Corruption Act of 2009. which essentially says it's an act to provide for the effectual prevention of corruption in both the public and the private sector. My Lord, the long title of the amendment also has to provide for related matters at the end of it. So it's our humble submission that the amendment cannot be read in isolation of the Mother Act, the Anti-Corruption Act of 2009. The amendment simply reinforces the Anti-Corruption Act. My Lord, that's why when they're referring to this act, they call it the Anti-Corruption Act of 2009 as amended. My Lord, he also submitted that Section 21A of the amendment is vague, broad, imprecise, and ambiguous. Our submission is that it's not ambiguous. Actually, that section is very clear. And simply needs a plain interpretation and understanding of the English language. I look section 21A, although it does not define suspect property. It goes ahead to explain 
what that property is in the particular. And to quote my Lord, it says, deals with property that he or she believes or has reason to believe was acquired as a result of an offense under this act. And my Lord, our indictment also clearly brings out the offense which we are talking about, which is section 10, one of the Anti-Corruption Act. For clarity, my Lord, we included the offense, which is loss of public property under section 10, subsection 1 of the Anti-Corruption Act. My Lord, all the elements of that offense are well brought out in that section. And dealing, a person deals with property, uh, subsection 2 of section 21A defines what dealing is. Further to that, my Lord, the property itself was defined as 2,000 iron sheets prepainted of this gauge 28 marked office of the Prime Minister. So it cannot be said to be ambiguous or imprecise. My Lord, the applicant decided to have a two-pronged approach with, by having both a petition and again applying for a reference. I know that amounts to a fishing expedition. If you filed a constitutional petition, the procedure is very clear. My Lord, I have not seen any evidence of a temporary injunction order staying this proceeding. But that is wasting this court's time. At the time, the constitutional petition was filed my Lord, it was not brought to the attention of the Chief Magistrate that there was already a petition. So she made a reference with questions for constitutional interpretation. My Lord, the respondent has drafted a question, which I won't repeat, but our submission is that there is no question here which requires constitutional interpretation. I read a reading of Article 28 1 of the Constitution, which was, has been allegedly contravened, is in the determination of civil rights and obligations or any criminal charge, a person shall be entitled to a fair, speedy, and public hearing before an independent and impartial court or tribunal established by law. My Lord, the keywords here are fair, speedy, and public. Actually, my Lord, it's our submission that what my land colleagues, counsel for the applicant, are trying to do is actually going against this very provision of fair, speedy, and public. Because today, prosecution came ready to proceed with this case with witnesses. Tactic of reference and petition is merely 
a delaying tactic. I wrote Article 28.12, sub Article 12 of the Constitution. Except for contempt of court, no person shall be convicted of a criminal offence unless the offence is defined and the penalty for it prescribed by law. My Lord, as we have already indicated to court, this offence of dealing with suspect property is clearly defined. The penalty is also clearly defined. On conviction to a fine not exceeding 160 currency points or a term of imprisonment not exceeding seven years or both. My Lord, in summary, we don't find any question that requires constitutional interpretation here. And my Lord, we invite this court to look at these authorities of Uganda versus Atugonza Francis. My Lord, at page 8, where it states that Article 137.5 should be read in the proper spirit of the Constitution, as was put succinctly by Wambusi CJ, retired in Ismail Serugo versus KCC and Attorney General. The petition, in brackets, read reference must show on the face of it that interpretation of a provision of the Constitution is required. It's not enough to allege merely that a, a constitutional provision has been violated. My Lord, page 8. The applicant must go further to show prima facie the violation alleged. and its effect before a question could be referred to the Constitutional Court. And they conclude, most references tend to provide an escape from justice by indefinitely staying and delaying the proceedings, thus clogging the system. My Lord, we believe that's the actual intention of this reference. My Lord, we also invite court to look at the authority of Godfrey Kazinda versus Uganda, constitutional petition, application number 50 of 2012. My Lord, I'm sorry the pages are not marked, but I highlighted where they state that, however, where a party to the proceedings before a court of law petitions on his or her own to have the constitutional petition determine some questions to do with the proceedings before that court of law, it does not automatically follow that the court has to stay proceedings before it, pending determination of the question a party to the proceedings petitions that constitutional court to determine. My Lord, in this same case, uh, the applicant had stated that in one of the questions that his complaint was that section 11, subsection 1 of the Anti-Corruption Act of 2009 is unconstitutional because for it contains ambiguous or undefi undefined phrases and thus was inconsistent with articles 28, 1, 7, 12 of the Constitution. Attempted to show how the alleged vagueness in the section, which has 
also not been identified by him to this court is inconsistent with the stated purposes of this application of the Constitution. On our part, we find the charge sheets well detailed, clear. My Lord, that was the decision of the Constitutional Court. And my Lord, this is not the Constitutional Court. This court is not vested with the jurisdiction to interpret a constitution. And this authority of Kazinda, with highest respect, has been cited out of context. It's not applicable on issues to do with the reference. And we pray you hold as such. My Lord, on the case of Uganda, versus at Gonza Francis. My Lord, that case is totally distinguishable from the current case. The principle therein is correct that Article 137, 5 should be read in its proper spirit and that the applicant, apart from the standard laid in his Maiseru Gold's case, must go further to show the violation alleged and its effect. My Lord, we demonstrated extensively that precision <coughs> is a hallmark of a fair trial as was held in the case of Onyango Bo and another versus Attorney General by the Supreme Court. We also indicated that this amendment was a latter act in which this section was inserted after the original section 21. we do not have a problem with the long title to the Anti-Corruption Act. Prima facie, the intention of giving a long title to the 2015 amendment assists us to know why or the rationale, the rationale or the mischief they wanted to cure. And from the reading of the long title, the long title which can be prima facie, an aid or guide, from the reading of the long title of the amendment, which prima facie can be used as an aid or a guide to understand the enactment of Section 21A. It is clear it was for curing a mischief of convicts trying to hide their property. So we are saying to bring a person under the provisions of that act when there is no convict. Is against the principle of legality enshrined in Article 28, 12. My Lord Leonard, Chief State Attorney has rightfully stated that the section does not actually define what suspect property is.
But my Lord, even the act of the state, including an offense in the particulars, defense of loss of public property under section 10.1, of the Anti-Corruption Act. In the particulars of an offense dealing with the suspect property, <coughs> demonstrates the vagueness of Section 21 a, one and two. It is here said, what is correct in the Sam Kutesa judgment is that there was a petition and there was a reference. The petition was filed earlier and the reference was before the trial court. My Lord, hiding the fact that there is a constitution petition which has been filed, and even this court has the jurisdiction to interpret the constitution, our duty is to convince this court, my Lord, to show that prima facie there are questions for constitutional interpretation. should not be interpreted as a delaying tactic. Because it is within the framework of the law. It is within the framework of the law. And my Lord, this submission that our application for a reference is unconstitutional or contrary to Article 28.1, why must this court, my Lord, try a person if perhaps the section why must this court try a person, an accused person, if perhaps the section under which the person has been charged is indeed unconstitutional? Is indeed unconstitutional. And my Lord, whatever the case, the Constitutional Court can interpret that section and say it's constitutional. And the trial continues. Is it asked for too much? No. The accused is before you, ready to have this trial. But where she has doubts, the accused is before you, ready to have a trial. But she's saying, let that doubt be cleared because she cannot be tried under an unconstitutional provision. In conclusion, as I said earlier, my Lord, this, this section has not been litigated upon. Probably, the state is right, probably it is wrong. Probably we are right or we are wrong. But we have a strong belief that the state is wrong in charging the accused under this section. We pray you find merit 
in our application. And on the face of it, the application shows that charging somebody based on that section contravenes Article 28, 1 and 12 of the Constitution. That way, a prima facie cause of action is brought up. Overrule the learned states and allow our application. We so pray. Much obliged, my Lord. Thank you. Together with the authorities that have been submitted, I will deliver my ruling in this matter on Monday. That is the 29th of May at 9 a.m. So, unfortunately, state, whereas you had brought your witnesses, let's um, pay attention to the objection and re deal with, the, with that before we proceed to the trial. Maybe we shall not, maybe we shall, who knows. So I am therefore extending bail for the accused till the 29th of May at 9 a.m. Thank you. 